Larry O'Brien was with the president the morning of November 22nd, 1963. There was, as I recall it, a breakfast meeting to take place and an outdoor event ever across from the hotel in a big open area. And I went in to visit the president and he was looking out the window down at this open area where they were putting the finishing touches on the platform and all the rest of it. And he made the comment to me, they talk about security and protecting you. But he said, look at this. If somebody wants to get you, they can always do it. I rode in the car behind the president. I rode in the car with the Secret Service. And now they had come on the cars. We're just about to make the turn. And I had always been conscious of the president's time. And I'm riding with Ken O'Donnell, who was the appointment secretary. And I looked at my watch and I said, Kenny, how far away are we from the trademark where he was due to speak at 12.30? And Kenny said, it's only about five minutes away. And I'm looking at my watch and I said, uh, that's great. We'll only be a few minutes late. Suddenly, shots were fired. And my initial reaction was uh, to say to the driver, what was that? And he said, I don't know, perhaps it's a 21 gun salute. But the motorcade started to move out rapidly. You could see the president's car and Clint Hill grasping the, the rear trunk and off we went. And of course, I have no idea whether the president or anyone has been harmed, but you have a at least a feeling that indeed shots had been fired. Clint Hill, myself, and another agent lifted the president uh, on the stretcher and with Jackie running beside us we raced into the trauma room at the at the hospital when we crowded into the hospital Mrs. Kennedy and Mrs. Connolly were standing there John Connolly's wife, the governor of Texas, who was in the car with the president. And uh, it was uh, understood that she was going to an upper floor of the hospital, which I construed to mean that John Connolly had been hit. However, that was true, but... Uh, I didn't recognize why Jack Kennedy wasn't being moved to the operating level of the hospital. Around and prayed, expecting the worst but hoping for the best. And then at one o'clock, Texas time, he was pronounced dead. Meanwhile, no one has any idea of the circumstances. No one can be sure that the vice president is the target. And our objective was to move the body of the president to the airport and back home. And that objective was being stymied, or attempts were being made to stymie it, by, I believe, a coroner and others, some local officials. And it became somewhat of a scene. Finally, We pushed aside the local officials, literally, advised them we were moving the body out, which we did, and with Jackie, those of us directly involved, we uh, moved to a remote corner of Love Field, and we tried over the 
this long flight of stairs, the Secret Service and others move the casket out of the plane, strap it in, and that process, one of the handles of the casket was broken, I guess, but it wasn't an easy thing to do. And then uh, Jackie, Ken O'Donnell, Dave Powers, and I sat opposite the casket. The plane was not taking off, and we made inquiry. The delay was the president's desire, the new president's desire, to have a Texas judge who was en route to the airport swear him in. And now came that long ride back. We sat with Jackie. And she talked about how, how much he loved the trip to Ireland and how she wished she could have gone. And he's telling him that she would have these cadets to perform for the president in Ireland, perform at the, at the funeral. And, and, and I was so proud of her that, that uh, she was holding us together. And I remember at one time she said, what will you do now, Dave? You were with him for all these years. And, and uh, I never felt so bad about anything in all my life. 